Alex Goodcane Milk. Uh, I also go by Dopa. I'm a uh, Yankton Sioux Ihantawan. Um, come from Yankton, South Dakota. Uh, kind of uh, live here now and over here in Staten Rock. Gave up everything to come be here. Uh, it's had one of the rarest opportunities amongst some people. Just have no responsibilities to tie me down to anything, no children, so I figured, you know, I do it not only for my nieces and nephews, but do it for those that can't be here, but they're here with us in heart and spirit. And the uh, most recent uh, one that impacted me most is when they took our North Camp. Hmm. October 27th. Yeah, it was, uh, it was pretty, uh, pretty intense. You know, I was with the Youth Council, where they're standing strong with our North Surrender Line. And I got picked out of the crowd. I could see, you know, we were listening to the police officers. We were backing up, and, you know, we had our own little gap between us and our lines. This guy just comes out of nowhere and tries to grab me. And my, I had all my people with me, and they they pulled me back before like he can. Grabbed him. Mm. And then, um, as I was happy, I was yelling around, he'd mojo, because it got me emotional. It's like, you know, we're listening to you. We just try to rest us. When we're moving back, and you're macing us. When we're moving back, doing what you're saying. And you're still doing that. Um, they tried to grab me again, and they didn't get me. I think the reason why is that they're targeting us because we're keeping the people together, keeping mm -hmm. us organized and strong. And so they're just trying to pick out the people that are doing that. Um, yeah. So that's what I feel. It's a uh, pretty emotional day when I seen uh, my friends getting took out of our Inipi, it's, uh, our sweat lodge where we go uh, to cleanse our spirits. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's wrong for them to do that. You know, they can't legally do that to us. You know, once we're in our EP, we, we can't do that. It's by mm -hmm. law. But, there we go. You know, so they can break the law, I guess, and we can't. That's how that's been going. Initially, the first action, they weren't suited up riot gear. There, there was nothing but police uniforms. And even then, they didn't have that many zip ties or anything. They weren't, it didn't look like they were going to gun out to hurt us. Now, when we go to the front line, they're suited up and we're... Uh, it does strike fear in our hearts because we stand there unarmed, yet they have these big cannon guns, rubber bullets, mace, and uh, tear gas and smoke canisters uh, to keep us away from singing our prayer songs or going and walking and chanting what we are, you know, no dapple. Mm -hmm. And it, a lot of our campers around here, including myself, it's starting to become really hard for us because it is war. This is mm -hmm. now war. This is no longer a peaceful demonstration. People are, um, go uh, a lot of campers are now going to the front line saying, we are, this is not a war. This is not, and meanwhile, while they're, while they're saying this, mm -hmm. you know, I'm looking to my right, there's helicopters flying overhead. There's uh, the National Guard, these LRAD looking vehicles, Humvees, and they're saying this isn't a war. This is definitely a war now. Mm -hmm. And a lot of us are getting hurt, uh, especially our youth council members. We had uh, one council member get have her arm broken twice by the same cop at mm -hmm. two different actions. Mm -hmm. We we had um, several of us get maced. Another one get um, drug dragged out of a, tea, uh, a nipi, a sweat lodge, um, in nothing but underwear, and thrown to the ground and arrested. Mm. I mean, these are violations of human rights, and no, it's not. This isn't just an indigenous, um, you know, movement. This is an all people's movement. Mm. This is more than just. Our, our, our native people, this is everybody. This is for the whole human race, not just humans, but also all of plant life, all of um, the four-legged, the winged, the ones that live in the sea. You know, we're trying to voice these issues that we need to continue in preserving this life the way our ancestors did. It's, it's shocking how um, almost a century, or no, a century and a half ago, our ancestors were fighting and dying for this land, and it's crazy how a, a century and a half later, we are still doing what our ancestors are been, have been doing for centuries. When I turned around and they noticed that even a dog bite couldn't stop me from fighting what I believe in, that's when they got scared. And that's why they're scared is because it will take a lot more than a damn dog bite, a, a bullet hole, uh, rubber bullets, mace, smoke canisters, noise, those noise things they have. It takes a lot more than that to tear us down because we're still here and we're not leaving.